Carlos Nelson with the Kansas City Business Association. And today we have a special guest, uh, Merlin Raglan. And she has a, a superb uh, artesian, would you say? Artesian handcrafted lemonade. All right. Uh, tell our audience a little bit about your company, what the name of your company is. And then I want you to tell them a little bit about yourself. Okay, uh, the name of my company is Ayamo Juicery Cookhouse. And it was, uh, I call it a Corona built business because prior to that, I was a childcare provider for 24 years. And when the uh, Corona or the COVID-19, this virus took over the world, everybody was scared. And a lot of people retreated to their homes and all of my customers were at home and I had to create a, another type of business to be able to be self-sustaining and to help my family, you know, to survive. So what I did, I was, uh, I've been juicing for like 20 plus years, like since 02. So I created a baking and juicing business during the Corona, during, during you know, 2020. And uh, it just developed into a business. So T tell, tell our audience uh, a little bit about the, the process. You say you've been juicing for uh, 20 years. What's, right. the, what's the difference in your product and the product that uh, we go uh, in, the, in the lemonade aisle or the juice aisle and soda aisle? Okay, uh, my product is different because I actually uh, handcraft uh, my fruits and I squeeze my uh, lemons and my limes. So I make it all natural with no nat no artificial flavors or no artificial ingredients. So everything is freshly squeezed and taken to the store. So when you get your product, it is probably only a week or two, you know, old. Uh, and it lasts, it lasts about three months on the shelf. But it normally when I first bring it in, you know, it's freshly squeezed and made at that time. So talk, and I talk. wanted to make a product that was real and natural and had actual actually tasted like the fruit. Talk to uh me and our audience in reference to where your product is located and talk a little bit about how you were able to get your product located in uh, the locations where uh, consumers can uh, purchase it. Okay, um, basically how I got uh, into the stores, I went with a friend of mine who was already in the stores. I don't know if you know about Baby Sis Sassy Salsa. I went with her she asked me to come and help her and I would be helping her to craft up and uh, uh, package up her product. And so she was uh, selling it at SunFresh. So I would go with her a few times and that's basically how I got introduced to uh, being at a grocery store. And at the time they weren't taking any new clients or any new uh, products at that time because they were kind of revamping it kind of changing some things before they accepted new vendors. So um, back in January of this year, I had wrote to them and they ended up having me to come in and do an interview basically to become a vendor there and I was accepted. And that's how my product started at uh, you know a chain grocery store. And then um, from there, I went over to SunFresh on the Westport and uh, I, I did the same exact thing. I wrote to them and I had a meeting with them and then they accepted my product. And then from there, I went to Green Acres in the Briarcliff and I went to Nature Zone in Westport. And also they have a location down in the River Market, Farmer's Market. And so that's basically how I, you know, started. Uh, Hy-Vee had an event in October 
And I went over to the event in October and I ended up meeting some district managers there. And that's how I ended up getting into the high V stores. Um, so basically, if you just have a will, you know, and, and, and persistence and determination and discipline, um, you can basically do anything, you know, that you put your mind to it. You don't want to let anyone stop you, block you, or try to say that it can't be done until you actually get out and produce something, product, or whatever you have that you're wanting to get out and market. You have to put a plan together and just go around until somebody accepts you. A lot of times you're gonna get no's, you know, I've gotten some no's, but that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna go back and uh, talk to those people that told me no. You know, I just have to figure out a new and a different approach to be able to do that. One of my close friends, James Watts, he uh, right. was in, uh, marketing and all that. I'm saying for years, right. he would say, Carlos, the same one that tell you no today, tomorrow, they might tell you yes. Correct. And, and, and uh, you have given encouragement from my point of view, I talked to you off camera, to young entrepreneurs, especially young women, to know that you can make it. But uh, the main thing is you got to want to put the work in. Yeah, and it's a lot of work. I know what people don't see all of the work. You know, you just see that the product's there and the person probably, you know, on the shelf or whatever. But it takes a lot of work. Um, I, I mean, you have to go and always, you know, do some vending events at all the different stores. Like at all of my locations, I take the time out to go to those stores, whether it be big or small, and set up and get people to sample and taste my product. Be because it's new and because I don't have the marketing monies that larger organizations or companies or corporations have, I have to put in a lot of on the ground work, you know, uh, boost on the ground, meeting people, talking to people, uh, they trying the product. So you have to do that over and over and over again, because, you know, it's hundreds and hundreds of people that go in and out of the stores. So therefore you got this opportunity to present your product to all these different people. And that is the blessing, uh, you know, and that seems like it just since Corona, Corona has like rebooted the world. and now in the city, it seems to be like, it's so accepting to have local products. People are so sick and ill, you know, and have health issues and they're wanting to change the way they purchase products and change the, you know, what they're eating. They don't, a lot of people don't want to consume all those artificial colors, flavors, or high fructose corn syrup products. So. This is really a great time if you're having anything that's natural, you know, and handmade, handcrafted, that's fresh and without a lot of preservatives and chemicals. This is a time to get those products out here and moving and going. Uh, what I'd like to ask you also uh, before we wrap this up is talk about some of the people in your life that influenced you uh, to, you know, become who you are? Oh, uh, props. Okay. Of course, um, my mother, my father, and, and, and my uh, nuclear family, as well as my extended family. My, my mother comes from the South, uh, born in Louisiana, raised in Arkansas. So they were a close-knitted family. So I had a lot of aunts and uncles to encourage me. Uh, a lot of them were self-employed, you know, the ones that I was around. Uh, my father also had started a printing company and business, so he was gifted in doing that. Um, it was never a time that my parents ever said that you can't do this. You know, whatever I wanted to achieve or do, they wouldn't knock me for it. They would let me go on and try and do that. You know, I never forget my daddy was 70. My father was 76 years old and he built 
a house from the ground up at 76. His house is over in Independence and he is listed as the builder of that uh, house. And, you know, and when I saw my father, you know, being that age and building a house from the ground up, you know, I knew, wow, you know, it's nothing that you can't do. And also uh, Kit Carson Roke, who was a judge here, he was an inspiration to me. His mother kept me when I was a young girl. And, um, you know, so I always hear her, you know, speaking. She was uh, strong for women to get out there and do it. And, 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 you know, and my mother didn't drive until I was seven. And she was the one who encouraged my mother, you know, to go out and get her own automobile, be her own person. And so I learned a lot from a lot of older people that raised me. You know, they made sure that I wouldn't ever let anybody stop me. And I would just remember Miss Roke would say, you know, if you find the man down on the ground leaving there, you keep on moving and going. Don't try to pick nobody up and clean him up because he's going to probably start talking to you crazy and this and that. You know, I would just remember a lot of things she would say. Whereas, you know, to just make sure that basically she's just saying, make sure that you're your own person. You are 100 percent. You don't have to have anybody to make you a whole person. She was one of my personal friends, along with Inez Kaiser, who served on uh, the Full Employment Council. We were founding board members. And Inez had the first Black-owned public relate woman's public relations firm in the United States. And both of them had uh, an influence on me also right you know yeah. so uh with that being said uh let's give a rundown where our community can support you and where they can get your products okay my products are at the blue parkway and westport sunfresh which is marsh sunfresh and uh, Green Acres Market up in Briarcliff, uh, Nature Zone in the Westport, and at the High V stores, Blue Springs, Gladstone, and Liberty High V. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, I'm gonna steal one of my compadre's closing lines, uh, Jim Watts. It was a plum pleasing pleasure to have you on the show tonight. That's how he closes. And when, oh, okay. I, and when I, I had him, he was over at uh, Nature's Own and he's on a video trying to product too. So, uh, yeah. uh, right, uh, good man. Uh, oh, yeah. but, but as as we close, uh, when you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself. Thank you. Right. Thank you. This is brought to you by the Black Economic Union, located at 1601 East 18th Street, Kansas City, Missouri.